I love Abraham, he's my favourite character, and the reason I love Abraham is because he's kind of a pioneer. He, he gets things going and sets off on an adventure, and he hasn't got a clue where he's going. I like him. I would love to be like Joseph in his, in his best moments, that I'm able to forgive and to move on, no matter what. I think the character I relate to most is probably Judah. He seems to sort of head off in a direction which is not good, and his legs seems to be making a bit of a mess of his life. And suddenly he seems to sort of get a grip of things and bring around eventually he starts being in the he is the lion of Jesus so even though you would least probably the person you think of least he actually is a person that in the end you think of most I see snippets of myself in bits of all of them I guess Sarah a little bit a kind of disbelief that God might do something so phenomenal as make her a mom when she was 90 or whatever she was it's just so I'm not surprised she laughed so and I guess she goes on that journey and she has stuff done to her rather than initiating a lot of stuff so I, I, I guess her really some of the women like Sarah uh, and is it Rebecca who couldn't have children I mean I couldn't have children myself so maybe that was a bit of an identification thing but um, I think just identifying with the struggles that women would have it must have been quite a difficult time for them to be um, you know, to be women, particularly if they couldn't have children. It was such a culture built around having children and having sons. Um, and I think I identified with them, but felt very glad that I didn't live in those times. Um, but having said that, God still used them in lots of different ways, and that was really good to see. When God creates the earth, he says, and he made the stars. Well, I mean, that's what, we, that's what you read. I mean, it's just got like this one liner, and he made the stars, and then you get Esau's offspring there's loads of them and it's just the big surprise I think has been that God sees things so differently to us that the things we might value he seems to see differently I think the surprise in reading Genesis has been to some extent just how how kind of broken they all were and how God uses messed up lives and sometimes you read them and because we read the a bit at a time you kind of sometimes find yourself getting left with a, a nasty taste in your mouth because you've got a little snippet of something and you think that's outrageous how can he who you know you're so used to thinking of one of the fathers of the faith how can he behave like that oh it's outrageous you sort of get a view that everybody in the bible is all happy and jolly and everybody's really good and pure and excellent and and it's not these guys are really make a mess of it and sleeping with different women and killing people and just making an absolute mess and not listening to what God says and yet God still seems to use them, he still wants them and it just seems amazing. It gives me hope that, you know, despite despite making a mess of my life early on, that God can still use me. In the past I've, I've read bits of it and left bits of it and I think reading that whole kind of book in its entirety really makes you see that we'll all get things wrong all the time. <laughs> Um, and that's reassuring in some ways, but it was it was quite shocking in some ways as well, yeah. I think the biggest surprise in Genesis for me is that the understanding that Abraham was picked out as as somebody who wasn't anybody special. He was just one amongst lots of tribes. They were all the same. They were all nomadic herdsmen wandering around. But God said, I'll have you. Um, whereas I've always thought maybe somehow that Abraham always was a Jew not that he was the first person in the line that became the Jewish people 
which story have I found the most challenging? I think probably probably the Joseph story, um, just because the, the poor guy, he kind of starts off as the favourite and then his brothers treat him so shamefully and then he just has to wait and wait and wait before it all comes good. And boy, does it come good. I mean, he just rises to be in charge of Egypt. Um, so yeah, that's, that would be, I think that would be the story that uh, I found. Well, probably, well, it's a great story as well, isn't it? So yeah, good story. The most encouraging thing I think in Genesis is that God always gets his way. You know, he is completely trustworthy and despite human failings, and there's plenty of them, uh, God will get his way. So that gives me great confidence in God. I, I found studying Genesis alongside great minds like Golden Gay and Wenham really helpful because they know stuff that I'm never going to know. They're, they're just bright, they're brilliant, they know stuff around the, around the place. So just using a really good commentator um, I just find so helpful because they bring, bring out word meanings and geography, ge ge geography, geography and stuff like that. So yeah, really good. I've liked Golden Gay in some respects. Um, I've, I've not found him altogether sufficient for all of my engagement with Genesis but I've liked reading his big picture takes on things because I think sometimes you can get so caught up in the tiny details of what's going on that whilst that's important I think there's also big big storylines and big themes that that Genesis is foundational in providing I guess one of them particularly that he draws out is the fact that it was originally written for God's people in exile so the, pe the original readers were in a rubbish place um, and perceiving what it would have meant to them in that place has been quite it's been quite a helpful way of understanding Genesis. I found any material that you add to what you read in Genesis helpful it gives you a bigger picture it gives you different views it prompts your mind and maybe you would disagree with Golden Gate or whatever the material is but if you disagree with something it means that you're actually thinking about something so any material good or bad as long as you can discern between what is good and bad which is biblical I think is all good <laughs> yeah, I think Golden Gate has helped in one or two respects so that he gives a sort of an overview and makes me think and I'd never really considered the possibility of the exile people being the people who are reading the story that we're reading and how they would relate to it so that has made me think again and given me just a, another angle another lens to look at it through my favorite part of Genesis is the whole thing really just the whole narrative that amazing creation story and I, I love I love the first three chapters although I have to say that chapter three is a bit of a disappointment when it all goes horribly wrong but just the un the unpacking of God's designs with humanity and the stories and the characters and they mess up big time and yet God still uses them it's a, it's a great book the advice I would give to somebody going into Genesis for the first time is read it as a story now I'm not saying it's not true but let it let it take you on a journey I think it's a journey it's the journey of that particular group of people but it's as a Christian it's it's the the origin of my story my journey and so I would say let it take you where it takes you and feel the things it makes you feel because it's not supposed to be tidy it's not supposed to be a nice harmless little I don't know stereotype of good people it's supposed to be messy and it's supposed to make you angry and it's supposed to make you question things I guess that as well it's supposed to make you question uh, why I guess why God why humanity why this world why those people and just let it I would say let it do the things that it does to you go in with a completely open mind don't take your preconceptions with you read the stories as they are don't don't imagine there's something else just take it as written and live it with them we, we're all coming at this believing in God and and kind of having that just that basic trust in God so I think for somebody coming to Genesis for the first time maybe who's a new Christian or who's not a Christian um, I would just say look for God in it and don't get hung up on the things that people do all the time because um, that could switch you off because you'd think well why has that happened and why has God let that happen um, but try to see what God's purpose is in it. Try and really become that person that you're reading about try and understand how they might feel not just read it as it is 
How would I sum up the overarching story in Genesis? Well, crumbs, it's, it's, it's just massive, isn't it? God has this incredible plan to share of himself and create a beautiful world and to make people in his image, and he does. He creates this incredible stage, and he, the, the pinnacle of that is he makes mankind, and he gives them choice, the choice to trust him and love him or not, and they blow it. They, they basically choose to go against him and the whole thing the whole creation thing is ruined and then the ongoing story is how god's going to rescue this beautiful plan this beautiful world and actually prove that he's worth trusting and it's the unfolding of that and how god chooses one man and through that one man he's going to make everything right if i were going to sum up what i think genesis is about i would say it's addressing all kinds of why questions why god did it in the first place and it's beginning to show that he, in his grace, created creation, Adam and Eve, humanity. And I would say it's to share his glory, to show his glory to the world. Um, and then he creates this people that are his people. And he doesn't choose them because they're good. He chooses them to display his beauty and his goodness to the rest of the world. They're supposed to, he blesses them. but. He's not, they're not supposed to just hang on to that blessing. They're supposed to be a blessing to the rest of the world. I think Genesis probably tells us about the character of nature of God in, in, in many ways. Um, God wants us. He's wooing us all the time. He's never, never gives up on us. Um, so it shows a, a God who's persistently in love with us. Gosh, the character of God, he just comes through as incredibly patient, incredibly loving, incredibly beautiful really, and determined that he's going to win the day. Uh, I, I just love the fact that God takes very ordinary, very failed people and does amazing things through them, despite their failings and despite their, their terrible attitudes and the things they get up to. God is good. So a favourite story would be Joseph. I think because of the forgiveness side of it, he seems somebody that just everything in that story would make you think that he would get his revenge on his brothers but he doesn't and although he does play with them a little bit for a while um, he does want to be back in the family with them and he forgives them and that's amazing and that it was a good ending to Genesis after sometimes seeing characters who you thought you know these people are a bit challenging some of the characters and you could really see a different person there and you could see a bit of Jesus in, in what was going on there so that that was good to see are there any other links from Genesis to books in the Bible everywhere, full of them? Everything points forward, every character you can kind of see that God's taking the story forward. Abraham, this pioneer who goes ahead of the way to, to prepare, oh it's Jesus isn't it? Joseph who, has, who suffers to save the wider family, it's Jesus. I mean it's just absolutely wonderful, it sets the scene and it sets, tells us where we're going, brilliant book. People should read it.